All right, friends, brace yourselves for another innovation onslaught. Who's ready? Yes, I am ready. We're going to start with the winners of the Tourism Innovation Challenge Workforce category. To tell us how they'll be supporting tourism operators in their workforce planning, please welcome Robbie Dalton from La Carlos. Still morning? Uh, good morning. No, afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Robbie, and I am the founder of Localis. Thank you. How do I do this? Yep, cool. Uh, before we kick on with the presentation, I just want to say a big thank you to DTIS. We work with a lot of governments across Australia, 140 or so, and there is no better state to be an operator or be in the tourism industry than Queensland. We get so much amazing support. Events like this don't happen without careful planning. And you know, on behalf of all the operators, thank you so much. So, a little bit about Localis. So, Localis combines multiple data sets together to try and explain the relationship between people, places, things, and time, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it's important. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to move uh, past metrics and raw data to a thorough understanding of what's happening at a particular place at a particular time and how that affects the local economy and businesses in turn. Uh, recently, we won the DTIS Innovation Challenge uh, for an operator-focused tool, and that's what I'm going to talk to you today about. Cool square. That's not what it looks like normally. Um, so what do we know about tourism operators? From a locality perspective, this is what we use as our design principles. And the first part of this is most tourism operators are small. This is really, really important because if we are designing a product, it has to be at a price point that's palatable for operators. Most operators also, uh, they do lots of different things. They wear many different hats. Some are pouring coffees while fetching lost property, while making beds, while doing all sorts of stuff. So if you're designing something for them, it has to be really easy to understand and grasp and work within existing workflows. The second point is, Economic pressures are forcing operators to focus on demand and how to save money. If you've backtracked a couple of years, it's all about we don't have enough staff, we can't do enough beds. That's because demand was really, really high coming out of COVID and there wasn't enough staff. I think we've flipped to that now. That has really changed. Most of the feedback that we get from operators in region is demand is gone, please help me, we're in double digit decline. And this is true in very regional areas all the way through. Cities are doing better, but regional areas are really copying it. Um, and this is just a universal truth, which is to make better decisions, you need better access to data. However, data is very expensive, and also data experience with data is quite low, especially if you are pouring coffee and doing other sorts of stuff. Introducing the AI-powered workforce optimizer. Now, Localis has a historical, you know, other clients in the past have been local governments, but we started um, wanting to give the data to operators, bars, restaurants, tour people, and this was really born out of an insight um, by watching people interact with our data. So we gave this product away for free, and we were just watching people interact. And then, you know, things started to pop up, and we're like, why is that happening? So we spoke to a few people, and um, this is the, the result of us speaking to these people. So this is a real-life example. I also apologise to everyone except for Adam, because he'll probably like the graphs, but there are a lot of graphs coming up, but it's important to get the point across. This is what goes into the background. The number one thing we have to do when we build this product is we need to build a baseline of demand. What you're looking at here is the yellow squiggly line. That's real-time demand, actual demand, for an accommodation provider in Noosa. Along the bottom there, you have dates. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there are dates going along the bottom. And obviously, the squiggly line, the higher it goes, the more demand you have. The lower that line goes, the less demand you have. <clears throat> the next thing we want to do is we want to start adding in key variables that might influence demand. Why are those squiggly lines going up or down? The first thing we do is add in ones that are quite obvious. We know school holidays go up and down. Obviously, that's going to be a big key. What's not obvious and what's harder to model is, is 2024 going to look like 2023? Is it going to look like 2022? Those are pretty big differences and big changes that need to happen because if you are looking at aligning staff or hiring new people or should you get marketing market, understanding how one year benchmarks against another is very important. 
We then add in stuff that's less obvious and stuff that's more real time and stuff that's difficult to prepare for. This blue line here, or uh, well, greenish line, uh, was from a weather event. Now, this weather event didn't happen. Um, there was a rain bomb a couple of years earlier, and this forecast was for a Sunshine Coast rain bomb that never occurred. But because they did forecast it, they scared everyone, and there was a whole bunch of cancellations, and which resulted in a huge drop. Weather, as everyone in this room knows, has a big impact on um, you know, people obviously visiting an area. Then you have a major event. This is Noosa. So this is the Noosa Triathlon. Again, a gigantic spike in traffic. Now, I've chosen four very obvious things for, because I've got 10 minutes, basically, another five minutes left. Um, but there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of events that we take into consideration. We also allow people to, to give us events and see if their event does have an impact on demand. Oops, I'll go back one. This is historical demand. Operators don't care about historical demand. They want to know what's going to happen into the future. The way that we get future data is that we can tap into property management systems, accommodation providers, and we can also model back on transaction data. So the next slide is future looking data. This is real life demand about what's going to happen in Noosa from May um, when I first did this all the way into the future. Now, what you can see, there's two differences here which I want to, want to call out. The Noosa Marathon, is a massive increase in accommodation, but the Food and Wine Festival isn't. The reason for that is that despite what people think, the Noosa Food and Wine Festival doesn't bring a lot of overnight visitation from outside of the area. This is a community event that people from the Sunshine Coast go to. Now, if you were to speak to the local government person, they go, huh, oh, that actually brings in a lot of people. It does bring in some people, but not as much as the Ironman events. Now, this, we're focused on accommodation data for now, but what about tour operators? What about people who hire surfboards? What about bars and what about restaurants? Don't worry, we've got you covered as well. The way that we get this data is we have a partnership with the largest transactional company in the world and we get very fine granular uh, data based on you know, bars, restaurants, categories, 300 different categories of spend. This is accommodation. The next one is future for uh, um, attractions. The first thing you'll notice is that the Noosa Marathon doesn't have a high demand of attractions. When we first saw this data, we gone, there must be some sort of mistake. When we talked to people, the operators on the region, they said, no, that's extremely obvious. Anyone who does a marathon isn't looking for more things to do while they're in region. They're not out trying to go paddleboarding. They're not out trying to do more things. They come to the event, they go to all the other event stuff, but they occupy all the beds. So this doesn't actually bring a lot of um, you know, demand for attractions. But the Food and Wine Festival does. So I'll speed along. What, our, what we're going to provide to operators isn't all of these graphs, which I think might bore you all to death. What we want to do is present something in natural language. So we want to inform clients about what's going to happen before it happens. These are three live examples when we do this manually about what we can do. So number one, there's a large conference this weekend in Longreach. There is higher than normal people in the area. So we recommend you stay open on Sundays. Trying to get someone in regional areas to open on Sundays is very difficult, but at least we've got the data there to say there will be people there. If you start serving coffee, you might make more money. The Nutra Triathlon I just talked about, but another one we're getting more into is you're currently trending below last year for, your, uh, for bookings. We recommend that you do something about this. So instead of being reactive, why don't you get some ads in market? Why don't you get your CRM going to try and intervene? So let's move from being reactive and bad things happen to being proactive. So what do operators actually get? What this product will be, it's a cloud-based software as a service product where you can log in anywhere in the world and get access to real-time information about what's happening in your area, trends that are specific for you, and then what you can do about it before it happens. The insights that we give people um, that have been historically too expensive to build a correlation engine. Um, so, you know, the system learns and gets better over time. So this is obviously quite unique. Um, and then there's unlimited support and unlimited training from myself, Elliot, who's got another Locala shirt on and the team. We make things very easy. We've got lots of clients with a lot of experience doing this. Why is this a great solution? Um, this is an Australian first, but it could potentially be a world first as well. I don't want to go out there and say it is world first, but it's definitely an Australian first. So Queensland operators are the first ones in the country to get this product. Every operator, regardless of how small you are, you can be one person or you can be hundreds of people, can instantly benefit from this product because it has instant insights for your particular area and your particular uh, benchmarking. And we've got a great record of doing this. Now, I've got one minute left. Um, we want people to sign up. So there'll be a period of free stuff. 
if you would like to get free access to this tool, we're opening it up to beta access. Um, so if you want to access it data for your particular area and how that particularly works for you, sign up and then come see me as well. The end. <laughs> Thanks.